Hi, this is Brad Linder with Linux Smartphones and Lilliputing.com, and this is the Pine Phone. This is the Postmarket OS Community Edition phone, which means that that is the operating system that it shipped with, but it's capable of running lots of different Linux-based operating systems, and right now it's running Manjaro Linux Beta, which uh, just came out uh, a couple of days ago. You can see I'm shooting this video on Monday, October 19th, and the next Community Edition version of the phone is actually going to ship with Manjaro. So I wanted to go ahead and show you where that is. Um, the phone so far. So when you lock it, the first thing you'll notice is that the default wallpaper or desktop uh, does say Manjaro. You can change that. There's a lot of customization options. And overall, the user interface here is pretty similar. And that's because it's using the same uh, Fosh shell that uh, Postmarket OS ships with. There are different user environments that you could install, but this one is fairly complete and, and sort of makes uh, Linux environments feel a little bit more like smartphone operating systems. Uh, it's developed by the folks at Purism for the Librem 5 phone, but it's available for other Linux distributions as well. And uh, overall, it works pretty well. So the first thing that uh, that I noticed when I loaded this up, it's running off of an SD card right now. It's reasonably fast by PinePhone standards, um, but there's certain things that come pre-installed that work pretty well. So for instance, the Firefox web browser takes a moment to load, but once it does load, it works reasonably well and allows you to do things like... I find typing a little bit difficult on this keyboard, but hopefully search will figure out what we're looking for. There we go. So you can see it's relatively responsive when it comes to web browsing, and it also handles video playback reasonably well. Once it starts. I do not endorse that message. So you can see we've got uh, video playback in Firefox. Another thing is that there's just more apps that come pre installed here than Postmarket OS. So we've got Chess and uh, 2048. Uh, a couple of games. We've got an image viewer, maps application, uh, and megapixels, which is a camera application. It's still a work in progress camera application, and like a lot of things, it takes a moment to load here. But once it does, you'll see that we can get a preview of pictures that we want to snap. Take that picture. Um, I can change the uh, ISO speeds and shutter speed. First I have to disable auto, there we go. All right, it's having a little bit of difficulty keeping up with that, but there we go. So you get a little bit of manual control over the camera and the front camera works and it's still a little sort of green tinted, which is something that I noticed uh, in Postmarket OS when I tried megapixels, but the Overall image quality is a little bit superior, and it can uh, it can take pictures reasonably well. And I can see a bunch of different pictures here that have uh, been taken. So that is uh, that's the megapixels application. There's also a file browser called Nemo, pre-installed that we could or should be able to use to navigate. There we go, through different uh, things. Now again, since this is a Linux-based operating system, of course, there is a terminal application. Uh, you could navigate this way. You can use your command line. Um, and there's a software center, whereas Postmarket OS comes with a couple of apps pre-installed and you just use this to, uh, to update the existing applications. Uh, Manjaro actually does allow you to download and install additional games. So for instance, not all of these seem to work properly, but here's a lightweight sort of five in a row game that I can just go ahead and download. I'm connected to the internet over Wi-Fi right now. And after a moment should load. Now it shows up in my list of applications. 
and I can start a game. Which I will probably lose pretty quickly. Yep, there we go. So um, overall, it's uh, it's pretty responsive. Again, by Pine phone standards, it's not a super fast phone, uh, and it is also a phone that um, you know is very much still a work in progress. So uh, it's neat that you get so many out of the box features, but I think really what makes it special, uh, like most things with the Pine phone, is that it's under development. There's a lot of work that's still left to do. If you're a developer, you can help contribute to that. If you're a Linux user, you get to run. Uh, native Linux applications on your phone, and um, but it's a little bit more feature complete than, than uh, some of the other software. And it does give you access to a whole bunch of tools. I've only been playing around with it for a little while here, so I wasn't entirely sure what this would do. It looks like we've got a system uh, usage uh, utility. Shows us uh, disk usage, shows us system resource consumption. We can even get a look at the, thermal, the thermals, so we can see the temperature that the CPU and GPU are running at. And uh, what else should I show you? I should probably show you the settings application, which uh, allows you to adjust your Wi-Fi, mobile, and Bluetooth settings. As I mentioned, you can change the background if you wanted to use a different one. Um, view your list of applications, sound settings, uh, default applications. Power actually has some nice options in here. So for instance, you can enable or disable automatic screen brightness. Uh, I found that it can be a little bit overly aggressive, so I turned it off so I can just manually choose what I want to do there. And then you can adjust suspend and power button and all sorts of other things in here. So um, that is a quick look at Manjaro Beta, uh, which came out recently, and I believe it's going to be pretty similar to the software that's going to ship with the Manjaro Community Edition of the Pine Phone, uh, which should be coming pretty soon. It's up for pre-order from Pine 64's store as of the time that I'm shooting this video on October 19th. So Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a look at the Pine Phone uh, Postmarket OS Community Edition running Manjaro Linux off of an SD card, uh, which is, I'll show you that because I've got a little time left in this video. So we've got the SD card right there and all you really need to do is uh, copy the operating system onto the SD card. When I say copy, you need to flash it. You basically need to write it to disk, insert it, reboot, and it should boot straight from that SD card, which again is something that uh, makes this phone relatively special. Um, it's not the fastest phone. The operating system is not the most feature complete, but it is a pretty versatile little phone for uh, Linux enthusiasts, developers, and people who just sort of want a hackable uh, pocket size device. So you can find out more details about the Pine Phone and about Manjaro and other information at uh, linuxsmartphones.com or uh, click the links in the uh, description of this video for more details.